Hello everybody, this is War Story Video Blog. I am Alex and I am in SOS Show 2019. This is the biggest military show in the world and uh, now I am uh, near Thomas Whitman uh, table and um, I would like to ask to explain about some of his items. So, hello Thomas. Hello Alex, it's always wonderful to see you all the way from Russia. <laughs> nice it's great to that you come over to America. Thank you, <laughs> nice and, to see you too. And I hope that you do well here, I'm sure that you do. The yes, show is over, after four days we're all... <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Very good show. Um, if you want to find something for your collection in good condition and to deal with people that are honest, there are many, many good dealers here. Uh, prices can sometimes be a little high, but for something that's really good, it's uh, generally worth to pay a little bit more. So I like to come here and bring premium pieces where I can. Nothing cheap, but everything worthwhile and a good investment for the future. Yeah. Yes. And um, uh, you have a good display, you have a um, good table, and uh, there is uh, not so much time to to speak about everything. Ah. So I would like to ask you about uh, swords because it's very interesting theme, and you have uh, two SS swords, uh, one um, field marshal pattern, and couple more interesting. And then in the video will be Damascus SA Honor Dagger. So, what we have here, uh, this is a uh, early uh, SS Degen, and um, it's never been cleaned, uh, and it was owned by an SS Gruppenführer by the name of Ludwig Hedesheimer. Mm -hmm. And if your camera can see, uh, Ludwig Hedesheimer's monogram is on the uh, pommel. Uh, of the dagger. It actually is an L and an H. Ludwig mm -hmm. Hedesheimer. Yeah. Obergruppenfuhrer. And then, to make it better, it has his SS serial number stamped into the blade. Very, very good thing and a very valuable Degen. Um, if this had no name on it, it would be worth probably about a half of what it is. Mm -hmm. So for someone who's interested in researching SS officers, and especially high-ranking ones, uh, this is a very good Dagen. Uh, it is unmarked, and often we see early SS Dagens with no marking on them. Mm -hmm. They'll either have no marking uh, or the marking of Krebs, Peter Dan Krebs. So it, uh, it's other than the, uh, the monogram and the serial number, it's a conventional sword with the nickel uh, SS Degen, mm -hmm. SS runes. And there is a stamp here on the yes. scabbard. Yes, stamp on the scabbard, and also and is a, uh, yeah, yeah. also so is an stamp. SS proof market here. Mm -hmm. We call this the Kulter Zeichen, SS Kulter Zeichen mark. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is this Degen, uh, and we compare it uh, to the one next to it. Uh, this Degen does not have any personalization, uh, but it's in beautiful condition. All of the darkening remains in the reverse of the runes button. Uh, and this particular one is made by Peter Dan Krebs. Mm -hmm. And also has the SS Kulter Zeichen marking on the scabbard and... Yeah. Yeah. Here. Yeah, here. But you can't see it because the, uh, the knot covers on the bottom. It has it has an original uh, SS officer knot with it. Portape. How much is a um, portape in case it's uh, selling separate? Um, anywhere from about a thousand dollars to fifteen hundred dollars, depending on the condition. Okay. This portape is a little worn, mm -hmm. so it would only be worth maybe nine hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars, something like that. Okay, just put to right. And the sword, the Dagen itself, uh, is nine thousand dollars, which mm -hmm. is about what you'd pay for a fine conditioned uh, Dagen. So that's those are those things. 
Next and thing is uh, my favorite series of uh, officers' words is uh, Field Marshal series by Carl Eichhorn. Yes, uh, Eichhorn made nine different swords that were in the uh, Field Marshal series, and this particular one is called the Prince Eugen. Uh, it's named after Prince Eugen, who was a hero in Austria. He threw the Turks out of Austria in the late 1600s and became a very, very wealthy man and a, and a general. Uh, so the Germans named these swords after past generals. And with the Prince Eugen, you have the, the uh, eagle and swastika uh, on the cross guard, but then you also have the Wehrmacht type eagle and swastika on the pommel. Mm -hmm. And then of course they have uh, standard blades and they're trademarked with the uh, Eichhorn mark. Mm -hmm. uh, all these swords that you can buy for as a good investment, but again, you want to buy something in good condition. Yes, it's true. This, this sword uh, is very glamorous because of its Art Deco motif. It's just beautiful the way everything is uh, even done, and even even on the how beautiful the workman is on the uh, P guard, the workmanship. A wonderful sword, and uh, uh, the, this was made by Richard Herder. Uh, they did not make a lot of swords, and what's interesting with this sword pattern too, there's no furrow on it. Most swords have a furrow here, which would be like this on a standard sword, but on this pattern they incorporate the furrow into the cross guard design, which mm -hmm. makes it really interesting. And it uh, looks huge. Yeah, it does. It's very, very nice. Very nice. This sword here is um, spectacular. It has a lion head hilt with an artillery pattern languette. Uh, and then a triple etch blade, a beautiful floral etching with all of the frosting behind it, which makes the etch jump up. And then in the center, it has an open winged army eagle with the swastika. Very, very beautiful, in full mint condition, brand new condition. And there is a blue in. And uh, a blue background. Mm -hmm. The blue background makes the eagle really stand out. And a triple edged. Uh, triple means, edged uh, means an edge on the spine mm -hmm. and then on the reverse. Yeah, they, that's very interesting. Yeah, and the scabbard is perfect, just like it was made yesterday. Perfect yes. condition. Scabbard, uh, condition of scabbard is uh, important because uh, there is a long thing and uh, you have a lot of chance to yes. take a dent on uh, it yeah. when you. Yeah, wearing. it bumps into everything and so. Yeah. It's very hard to find in a, a scabbard that still has original paint that's still perfect and not all chipped up or bended or, you know, the things that can happen with a long, flexy thing. Yeah. So, that's a very nice sword. Yeah, that's interesting. And uh, next items uh, that I would like to ask you to explain here. Few steps down. There are Damascus SA uh, dagger, then NPA and uh, this Luftwaffe uh, knife. So we can start. Uh, yeah, with... we can show this over here. You can see it better. Uh, this is the SA high leader dagger with Damascus blade and leather covered scabbard and special fittings. The, uh, the fittings of the hilt are all silvered and they feature a motif of oak leaves and acorns in the center. The uh, grip eagle is also silver. Very beautiful hilt. Mm -hmm. And the reverse is the same. Uh, and then they come with a hand forged damask blade. The pattern is always made in hair. You see a lot of fake daggers today that are very, very good, but they don't know how to duplicate the Damascus. It always doesn't look right, and that's how you can tell them almost right away. And they were only made by the Carl Eichhorn firm. Their trademark is on the back. Mm -hmm. And then on the obverse, the raised motto of the essay, Alles für Deutschland, and the uh, oak leaf sprigs next to it. Yeah. Uh, this dagger is in mint condition. Very, very nice. And then the scabbard 
is leather covered. This is the original leather too. Many of these will be recovered because the, they, the leather came off, they used old horse glue back in the day and it didn't hold up. So it's rare to see one where all of this is still totally intact. And it's all silver and you have to realize, well, oh, it's all black. I thought it was, so well, silver turns black. This mm -hmm. dagger has never been cleaned in 70 years. And that's very nice too. It's patina. Patina. Yeah. And then the chain hanger, uh, it consists yeah. of eight swastika links on the bottom and five swastika links on the top. Um, the connectors with the links, if you look at the connectors, they're oval. Mm -hmm. When you see reproductions, they somehow didn't notice that they were oval and they made them round. Yeah. So you can tell right away, ah, we have uh, trouble here. And then they're connected to a uh, snap clip that has a large SA runic symbol on it. So these daggers, you know, um, you pay according to the condition. Mm -hmm. But in a case like this, the condition is top, top. So I am asking $67,500 for this dagger. But you could find them for $40,000, $50,000, but they won't be in this condition. Yes. Yeah. Has this dagger ever been uh, dis disassembled? Disassembled. Yeah, it has because the um, the 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 tang nut uh, was not never tightened with a wrench, so it was easy to to turn it by hand. And uh, of course, I looked inside, and the cross guards are numbered, the tang is numbered, mm -hmm. uh, and also the tang is stamped Damast, D A M A S T. And we saw uh, parts of SS Dagger uh, last video. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. They're numbered the same way as the mm -hmm. SS ones. Yeah. yeah. This is good one and uh, looks perfect. And uh, could you show NPA Dagger? Uh, this is NPA Leader. Yes, NPEA Leader. These um, NPEA Leader Daggers were worn by the, the uh, teachers and officials in the NPEA schools. Um, this particular piece was made by a company called Bergsmuller. They were based in Berlin. Uh, Bergsmuller did not produce the dagger, but assembled the parts and supplied them to the NPEA. We see these are made by also Eichhorn, and every once in a while, WMW, but very, very rare. There's only about five daggers that exist by WMW. So the most we see are Bergsmuller ones. Um, the cross guards depend on the year that they were manufactured. This dagger was made uh, after 1938, so the cross guards are aluminum on this piece. The uh, grip, grip eagle is nickel, uh, and the scabbard is painted in olive drab color, and. Um, the fittings are all nickel-plated. And one thing we see with um, many NPEA leader daggers, you see the screws here on the top fitting. There's never a screw on the center fitting. Look out for ones that have that. They're no good. The real ones do not have a screw there. They put a chain hanger on, which was very similar to a Luftwaffe, first model Luftwaffe. And all they used was just a piece of metal, bent it over, just bent the metal over and soldered it. Mm -hmm. Very cheaply made, but that's the way they were done. And then the snap clip that you see many times with them, it's made out of pot metal, uh, and it has DRGM cast into the snap clip. Very important. And you, many times you see the clip is out here. You never want to push it in again because this is pot metal and it will break. And if you break it, you never find another clip. Mm -hmm. This kind of clip is very, very hard to find. So, the blades. Mir Sinal's Shining was the uh, motto, which meant be more than you appear to be. Mm -hmm. um, they have the trademark, Karl Bergsmuller, Berlin. And sometimes you will see them, Karl Bergsmuller, Berlin, Charlottenburg. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's just a different period when the blade was made, when you see those differences. And they always have a buffer 
But the buffer is not made of leather. It's made out of felt. Made out of felt. You know felt? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Yeah, not leather. Uh, and if you have an Eichhorn example, there will be no blade buffer. Mm -hmm. Only Bergsmuller used the blade buffer. So this dagger is 100% um, original. A very, very nice thing. And uh, a lot of details for collectioners. Oh, and, for, uh, uh, and they all have to be there. Yeah. You know, I went, I went through a lot of things that you may think, oh, this is too much to learn. But if it does not have all those little tiny details, you don't want to buy it. And yeah. these daggers are very expensive. So if you make a mistake, uh, you are not going to be happy with yourself. You yeah, sure. That. <laughs> <laughs> yes, by this dagger. Yeah. Uh, because few tables down, there is a, a fake one. I think you can see on your screens the pictures of this fake dagger. It costed uh, 2,000. 2,000 yeah, well, bucks. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, But still a lot to lose if it's no good. Sure, know? sure. Who wants to take $2,000 and throw it in the street? That's yes, what you're doing. Because you never uh, put uh, these two bucks, uh, th these 200 bucks uh, right. again. That's right. Yes. So even though it costs more money, it pays to buy the right thing and in the right condition. Yeah. You always get your money back plus a profit if you let a few years go by. Yeah. Yeah. And um, another uh, interesting thing, not so expensive but uh, quite rare and interesting, is Luftwaffe uh, yeah. forestry bayonet. Well, these um, these bayonets are in the um, uh, forestry which, of course, Hermann Göring was in charge of. Um, they had a division uh, of the Luftwaffe, and I believe from my study that that division was mostly based around Karen Hall, the estate that Hermann Göring owned. Mm -hmm. uh, he wanted Luftwaffe people there, but he also wanted them to be forestry people, so they established that small group. Uh, and they carried this uh, special bayonet and what we see with them, uh, they, they have a full stag grip on both sides and the grip is retained by three rivet and spatter nuts. Mm -hmm. Very, very interesting with a small, just a small cross guard. Uh, and the blade, it's like, we call it a stepped blade. It has, it has a narrow spine and it finishes short of the end. Now what you'll see with these, they'll they're marked Waffenloch Berlin, mm -hmm. and Waffenloch was a supplier, not a maker, mm -hmm. a supplier. Uh, these pieces were made by the firm of Chromalite. Chromalite also produced SA daggers. They were a very small company, and there were probably maybe 500 of these ordered, I would think, something like that. And what we always see on them, too, um, let's see if this, uh, there's a little... There's an H letter here. Mm -hmm. uh, no one has been able to figure out what the H means, but you want to see that on one of these um, forestry bayonets. And these are also very collectible, too. Yeah, this one looks very good. And yeah, the blade, the blade is condition. in mint, mint condition, mm -hmm. and you will see a brown frog on them yes, because it was Luftwaffe. Luftwaffe. Yeah. yeah, correct with brown. Yeah. Yeah, nice one. Yeah, it's a good. It's not mint, but it's very nice. I saw very few nice. here in the show, but uh, not a lot. Mm, there is each year less and less and less uh, items yeah, like this. Yeah, well, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, next couple of items I would like to ask you is uh, two customs dagger, uh, land customs and uh, water customs dagger. Water customs or sea customs? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can show you these. Um, That's interesting because not n uh, not often you can see two uh, customs daggers on the screen <laughs> in one moment. With a seat. Yeah, um, when you see the land customs, of course, these were the people that you had to show your passes to and so forth to get through the border lines, and they also charged duty on uh, goods that were being imported into the country. So, most of them that you see, not all, but most of them have aluminum fittings on the hilt. And when you look at a 
a land customs cross guard, you think, oh, it's uh, just an army cross guard. It is not, because the land customs wings tip upward on the ends. You see how that works, tipping upward? Mm -hmm. And then also the, the pommel, you think, oh, it's an army pommel. No, no, no. Uh, the land customs oak leaves have points on the top of them. See how they're all pointed? And on the furrow, the, the oak leaves also have points on them. Mm -hmm. And because these were aluminum fittings, they often had to be hand enhanced. So when you look at the leaves, you'll see there was little enhancing to the veins, all done by hand. And the same on the uh, furrow. And if you look at the breast feathering on the eagle, and also the oak leaves around the wreath. You'll see that somebody worked very hard to make that nice because aluminum comes out kind of vague. Mm -hmm. uh, this was all. And the scabbard fittings are usually not aluminum. They're steel, but they have a coating to look like aluminum so that it matches. The, the scabbard shell is steel also, mm -hmm. covered with leather. Um, and an easy way to tell reproductions that were made in the 70s and the 80s, if you have a magnet, the reproduction scabbard won't stick to the magnet because it's uh, just some kind of a uh, plastic material or something. Not the, not, the not magnetic material. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And one other thing too with with these customs daggers, the the scabbard fittings have these accent lines. You see that on, on each of the edges, the accent lines. It's but when you turn awesome. them over, mm -hmm. no lines on the back. Yeah. The reproductions, lots of times, they have the lines on the back. As I remember, Hurster reproduction has... Uh, yeah. yeah, that's an yeah. easy right. way to... Uh, the grip, by the way, another thing you think, oh, it's an army grip covered with leather. It's not. An army grip has only nine uh, rib sections whereas custom staggers have 11 rib sections and it's made of carved wood uh, covered with leather and then with the uh, spring wire. And the blade is, a, is the same as an army dagger blade. Um, in the case of this piece, it's made by the Carl Eichhorn firm. Mm -hmm. So that's the land customs. And how much is it? How much is uh, uh, not Not customs? real expensive. Uh, well, because of the condition, $3,000. Um, this other dagger is uh, the Water Customs or Sea Customs. Uh, these will be found in brass as well as gilt aluminum. The brass ones were made earlier in the period. Uh, this particular piece is brass. Um, and remember what I told you about the oak leaves. You have the same thing here with the pointed tips on the oak leaves. It's hard to see with the portipi on it. And you also see um, the eagle's wings tip up on the end. You can just see it through the portipi. And there's also enhancing too, some hand enhancing. Uh, the grip is wood covered with um, a um, blue leather because it's sea customs. Uh, the scabbard has the same features as the land with the little lines which only run on the obverse, not the reverse. And the leather is like a, a blue color. Um, often these sea customs were produced by a firm called Clement and Young. Mm -hmm. uh, Clement and Young must have had a contract uh, to make these. And from what I've learned during the period uh, there were only about 250 officers that would have been allowed to wear this dagger. So these are very, very rare. Um, considering how rare they are, uh, they don't command that high of a price mm -hmm. because they're, they're probably r almost as rare as that SA chained high leader I showed you. Uh, but still, they, uh, they are expensive. Uh, and you have to be careful because there's reproductions, a lot of reproductions of these also. Um, this one sells for uh, $8,000, mm -hmm. which is really not much considering how rare it is. You can buy a chained SS dagger for less than that, 
and yeah, they made uh, tens of thousands of them, you know, so it's just what people want to focus on. It's yeah. not how rare something is, it's how much in demand it is that the price makes the, uh, the difference. Yeah. So I hope that helps you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And now I would like to ask uh, viewers, I would like to ask subscribers, what uh, do you like to see next time? Maybe um, another different uh, types of uh, Luftwaffe daggers or maybe sea daggers, maybe Greeks Marine and something like that. Uh, so please uh, leave a comment, leave yeah. comments under this video. And uh, by the way, Thomas, uh, did you film video for your YouTube channel here? Yes, on, on our um, website, which you can Google under Whitman Militaria, uh, we have a YouTube site, and every show that we go to, uh, we go around and interview dealers and collectors, mm -hmm. and we don't just show daggers, we show headgear and medals and uh, you name it. Uh, there's a Confederate display in the back that we filmed this mm -hmm. time, so there's all kinds of things that, that we try to see, and it give you a good flavor of what goes on at the American shows, and uh, maybe gives you some incentive to buy an airline ticket and come over and see us, because you'll be welcome. We welcome everybody. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you very much for uh, your explain, and uh, it was really nice to see you, and uh, nice to film video with you. Thank uh, you, Alex. Thank you very much. It's always good to see you, and I wish you well. Okay, thank you very much. Thank bye. You. Bye, bye.